How much better does Ramon Sessions make the Lakers? We discuss on STN TV. Welcome on inside, Voice of the Nation Fast Break. My name is David Brickley, alongside Kevin Figures and Jason Riley. The Lakers needed a point guard at the trade deadline, and they got one, a pretty darn good one, actually. And for what they traded to get him, it's pretty insane. Uh, but the question is, guys, how much better does Ramon Sessions make the Lakers? I'll throw it to you first, Kevin. Does this make the Lakers now? I think we all agree before they weren't a championship contender. They weren't going to win a championship with the current roster. Does this throw them over the top? I don't think it puts him over the top. I think it's a great help for them. He obviously brings them a younger point guard, a point guard to create off the dribble, one they haven't had in years. I mean, Nick Van Exel, maybe, we're yeah, thinking no, the last right. point yeah. guard that can create off the dribble the way that Magic. Ramon Sessions has. I mean, exactly. Yeah. So uh, brings a little bit more energy defensively than I expected. Not the greatest outside shooter, but he's working on it, can penetrate a lot. So I think he, he brings an element that they haven't had. Definitely brings him a lot easier offense. But to say he's puts him over the top as a championship contender, I think if they would have gotten a Michael Beasley to come off that bench, or another player to come help the bench production, I think you're talking championship level. Now I think Session maybe helps him win another playoff series, maybe get to the third round, get to the conference finals. But a winning a championship, beating a team like the Thunder, I still think it's going to be a tough proposition. Things have really changed around Lakerland here because what we're doing right now, if you listen to yourselves, <laughs> is we are saying that this guy, the backup point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers, mm -hmm. suddenly is this major addition to this Lakers team. I don't buy it. I think maybe he makes them marginally better, maybe a game or two. Maybe they win a playoff series. But the backup point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers does not turn a team into a championship Here, team. Here's my analogy. If you are dating a girl who's considered a two on the Richter scale, and then you start dating a seven, that's a pretty big difference. And with <laughs> Derek Fisher, the worst, arguably the worst point guard in the entire league. There's I'm no not, argument about it. I'm not talking about starter, backup, 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 the third stringer. He is arguably the worst point guard in the entire association. So when you get a guy like Ramon Sessions, who's a starting point guard, they drafted Kyrie Irving. The guy's a stud, so obviously he's backing up a really good point guard in Kyrie Irving. But when you have what the Lakers have, a 37-year-old, slow-footed, couldn't hit a jump shot, could not play defense, could not pass, could not penetrate, and you get a guy that could do all that, that's that's a huge difference, I think. It's a giant upgrade. I mean, look, he may be the backup point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers who are by all intents and purposes, not a very good basketball team. But as Dave said, when you have one of the worst, maybe the worst point guard in the NBA, you have nowhere to go but up. So maybe he's not an all-star integral piece, but, I mean, he's he's a key to the cog. He's a piece of the puzzle. And you have a piece of the puzzle that can create shots for both himself and his teammates, something that Derek Fisher yeah. could not do. And here's the, that makes a difference. And here's the argument I made all season long is if Bynum, Gasol, or Kobe, one of those guys did not have a decent game, the Lakers lost you know, 10 times out of 10. 79% of the time before they got sessions, when the Lakers had a four score and double digits, they won the game. So if Meta came through, if Steve Blake scored off the bench, sessions will get you double points every single night. And he's a guy, I think, that can score 20 for you once in a while if one of those other guys aren't playing well. I think the Lakers' big three can go up against any big three in the association. We talked about the Miami Heat, obviously the aging Boston Celtics, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and then you bring Sessions on board. That's a guy that can give you 10 points every night, and that's really valuable. I I, I'm not arguing that Sessions is, isn't an upgrade because obviously he's I a big like upgrade. I feel like you're really disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, I, well, maybe, no maybe I'm being disrespectful. I'm yeah. sure I'll get some hate mail and some comments and, uh, here yeah. below. Yeah, that guy's a moron. Right. What he's talking about. You are a moron. Yeah. I'll get the Kevin Figures treatment, basically, okay, of course. what will happen. But to speak to Kevin's point, he said he's a piece of the puzzle. He's a piece of the puzzle. He's not the piece. I would say a very puzzle. important piece. Right. He can be a, maybe not the missing piece, but one of the missing pieces to making the more a more here's, complete team. Here's the thing about the Lakers. I think the starting lineup now is pretty much set. Uh, if Meta if Meta World Peace plays decent, I think again I'll put that starting five against any other starting five in the league. The bench is ungodly terrible. I mean, just ridiculously, it's it's horrible. That's the thing that's going to set them back in the playoffs. I think. And that's what separates the Thunder, a guy like James Harden come off the bench, or even the Miami Heat, or the Chicago Bulls. They have a really deep bench as well. That's what separates them right now. Here's what people are trying to talk themselves into. They're trying to say that the acquisition of Sessions suddenly made a very good basketball team in the Lakers, which isn't true, a championship contending basketball team, which also isn't true. And that's my whole problem with it. Yes, he's an upgrade. Yes, he's far and away a better you know, point guard than Derek Fisher, than Steve Blake, and anything else we could have put out on the he's floor. He's not a dime piece, but, but you'll bring him around your friends. This <laughs> Lakers team with Sessions is not a championship team. They're not even close. But, I think okay, maybe this is the they thing, get out of the first like, round. Hate Jim Buss. He's the worst thing ever to happen <laughs> to the world. And Mitch Kupcik, along with Jim Buss, you got to give him credit if you're going to, you know, blame him for all the poor times. You got to, you know, give him credit when things go well. Traded Luke Walton 
how in the hell did they get rid of that contract <laughs> to get a starting point guard? So I think Jason Capono, who is worthless, Luke Walton for $6.1 million due next year. They traded those two scrubs and a draft pick for Roman Sessions. Once again, once again, now, I'm listen, not though. arguing listen, that though. that's not a good move. The I'm only just reason, arguing the only, that it doesn't make them a championship contender The only contender reason Cleveland close. took on Luke Wong's contract was for the draft pick. Yes. So let's make these two separate deals. They pretty much traded Luke Walton for the draft pick. And then at the same time, they pre- what do they trade? Capono for Sessions? That's pretty much yeah. what it comes out to. Right. Pretty like, much. That's incredible. I agree. It's a great move. I'm just saying the, the move point doesn't make the Lakers Capono. a championship contender or even close. And we we agree on that, Jason. He doesn't make them a championship contender, but I does think he makes a bigger impact than I think you're letting okay. on that he does. They're not a championship contender. So they're not being the Oklahoma City Thunder. Not not a chance. You're saying there's no way to like because all that I mean all the Lakers have to do is beat the Thunder. I mean they're right. What the Spurs are the number two seed right now. The Lakers. I mean it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility if they all play their game with Bynum, Gasol, and Kobe and Meta and all these guys that they can win the West. The West is wide open this year. You're a chance of contender if you make the NBA Finals. Last time I checked, Should and I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. The way this team has played this year is thus far, what have they given you any confidence to believe they can play that well in a seven game series against a team like even a team like San Antonio or Oklahoma City? I don't think that they have. How That's are they the gonna issue. win a game on the road? They can't win in Washington. That's a good point. They or- can't win in Detroit. How is this Lakers team gonna go into a hostile environment with no depth, no bench whatsoever, and expect every guy that needs to perform well to perform well and win a playoff series? I just I, I don't I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be realistic in that I don't think this Lakers team is that good. Class is in session, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I got to say. Uh, what do you think? We're going to give you actually an opportunity to win this NBA officially licensed Lakers bracelet. All you got to do is subscribe to this Santa. We'll pick one of our new subscribers from this video to uh, win this uh, Laker bracelet courtesy of Fight. So that's pretty cool. We'll ask you the question as well. Make sure to comment below. How much better are the Lakers now with Ramon Sessions? Comment below, like this video, and of course, subscribe for your chance to win this Laker bracelet right here on STMG.